I um, grew up in the Crenshaw District of Los Angeles. Uh, my parents, uh, Addie and Lewis, migrated here in the 1950s. And my dad uh, was from a small town in Texas called Henderson, Texas. My mother is from a small town in Georgia called Evans. And uh, they migrated here uh, in the 50s like a lot of African American uh, people to get away from racism, uh, poverty, and a lot of the uh, not so favorable conditions of the South. And I was raised in a home uh, where, um, you know, where it, we did two things. We went to church and we went to school. And my parents really stressed that an education was the way out of, um, into a better life. And I often say that, you know, my teenage years were very boring. Uh, my folks were very strict. They knew where we were at all times, my sister and I, and they really kept track of us. So the, the thing in my household was it wasn't will you go to college. It, it, it wasn't an if. It was mandatory. And uh, from my earliest years, my father was, what college do you want to go to? And you know, looking at him at five years old, it's kind of like, well, what college, uh, Dad? So I was fortunate enough, I went to UC Irvine undergraduate. I went to USC Law School on a scholarship and ended up becoming uh, a lawyer, which was an incredible dream come true for me. And uh, I was very, very fortunate. Early in my career, I found the type of law job that I was suited for and became a prosecutor. And I often say that um, it, it, it was an incredible um, journey for me in the sense that when I first did my first trial, I knew instantly this is what I wanted to do. Uh, I felt much like a superhero in a pinstripe suit with pumps on and a briefcase. The feeling that I got in helping victims and in working with law enforcement officers as they testified and arguing before a jury and a judge and obtaining justice in some very uh, serious and meaningful cases just uh, really ignited something in me that um, made me believe that this is what I was born to do. So I ended up in the district attorney's office of LA County. It's the largest office in the nation. I started off doing uh, entry-level cases, and I worked my way up, uh, eventually working my way up to doing murder cases. I, I actually tried 12 you know, murder cases. Uh, one of them was a, um, um, a hate crime murder case where an African-American man was murdered in the Antelope Valley. Uh, another case was a death penalty case, and this, this was sort of the pinnacle of my trial career, and I would later enter management and work my way up through management. And finally, um, I decided it was time to run for the top job in L.A. County, which, you know, in the DA's office, which was the elected district attorney. And uh, I set off to, to actually run. I remember that it was really a footnote that I would make history by being the first woman and the first African American, but it was all about, you know, I, ha I felt I had the best ideas, I felt I was, the right, I was in the right place in my life, I felt I was the most qualified person out there, and I sought out to run. I was very much an underdog, not a polished candidate for elected office, uh, but I had several things going for me. I knew more about that office uh, because I had worked in various different parts than anyone I could imagine. I had the backing of my boss, and I knew uh, in my own self how strong I was, that I may have looked uh, softer on the outside, but I knew it was tough, that I could get up in the morning and, and campaign and work uh, countless and endless hours. And it was a tough road. Uh, there, were, there were many uh, tough challenges, but on um, December 3rd, 2012, when I was sworn in, in front of my children, my mother sitting in the audience, my family, uh, and uh, you know, maybe a thousand of my closest friends by then, uh, I felt that okay, this is this is uh, it was worth it. And uh, my advice to anyone, and not just girls, but anyone looking at this um, video who is thinking about a dream that they have is first of all just take that first step a lot of people spend a lot of time thinking about it ruminating over it 
second guessing it, uh, you've got to take that first step, and once you do, you'll find that your help will come from some unlikely sources. The second thing is, is you have to embrace your team. Uh, there are people who perhaps are in your life that are not part of your team, and when I say they're not part of your team, they're not helpful to you. You know who they are. When you look at caller ID, you say, not today, I can't deal with it. But uh, there are people who are on your team who are, who are rooting for you who want you to succeed, who can be very helpful to you. And you've got to embrace your team and trust them uh, and have them with you, uh, you know, as you seek this journey. And you've got to believe, you've got to see yourself actually succeeding and attaining your goals. And you've got to keep going. You, there, you've got to work your butt off. There are no shortcuts. Uh, you must uh, be willing to put in the time and effort it takes to attain anything worthwhile. And uh, you gotta have a little bit of a sense of humor too. That's very important. So um, I, I'm very proud to be part of this project as we celebrate the accomplishments of so many great women. Uh, and uh, I wish you well.